Tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny, Dr. Christian takes a peek inside the maternity ward in America's fattest city. His heartbeat. Here we go. In the feeding clinic, fussy food avoider Hannah... It smells gross. ...swaps diets with teenage comfort eater Victoria. All I'm going to say is good luck to you. And it's an emotional roller coaster for both. I didn't realise that it was such a problem. Victoria goes stateside for a shocking glimpse into her potential future. I don't want you to have to go through what I do. And journalist and recovered anorexic Emma Wolf investigates the devastation caused to older women who develop eating disorders. My grandchildren, when they were born, I was too weak even to lift them out of a cart. <laughs> I'm in McAllen, America's fattest city, where obesity levels have hit an all-time high to find out what impact obesity is having on all stages of life, from cradle to grave. Dr Christian has been on the front line of McAllen's obesity battle at the city's doctor's hospital. My heart showing stress, my eyesight, my kidneys. And has witnessed firsthand the damage it can cause at all stages of life. There's not much left of that one, is there? No, they cut out all the toes. Now he's finding out the impact obesity can have right from the very beginning of life, with a visit to the women's hospital. They deliver 750 babies every month here, and around half of the expectant mothers are obese. That means complications to both mother and baby, including high birth weight babies, high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, and DVT. I'm here to find out exactly what impact obesity is having on pregnancy and on births. Hey, how are you? Hi, Dr. Vella. Nice to see you. Veronica is 36 weeks pregnant and has come to see physician Dr. Vella for a checkup. So you're going to do an ultrasound scan? We're going to do a scan, yes. She moved to McAllen after the birth of her first child. So can I ask you, your first pregnancy, how did that go? That pregnancy went very well, but it was um, over 10 years ago. So right. it was much younger. So now I have. Apart a from lot age, of what's changed then since? Oh, well, my weight. How has your weight changed? Um, it's significantly increased about 60 pounds. So least. since you came here, you've put on a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yes. In fact, Veronica's increased weight meant she didn't even realise she was expecting until she signed up for weight loss surgery. I was preparing to have the gastric sleeve, so I went in to have my lab work and I found out I was five months pregnant. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> it wasn't planned. No. Oh. No. But it was a nice no. surprise, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Most mums will only have one or two scans during their pregnancy, but Veronica needs one every week to make sure she and the baby are well. She has high blood pressure and gestational diabetes, a temporary form of diabetes which occurs during pregnancy and can bring complications during birth. His heartbeat. There we go. That looks pretty good. You look pretty good. Thankfully, baby is in good health, but Veronica needs careful monitoring. Infants born to diabetic moms have a different distribution of their body fat. They're, they're kind of big-shouldered and, and chunky and, and round. And many times we have problems with shoulder dystocia, which can be an emergency obstetrically. Shoulder getting stuck on the way yes. out. And you have to do some special maneuvers to try to get that baby delivered, if you can. It's a complication which can lead to a newborn suffering paralysis or brain damage, and is one of the reasons why obese mothers are nearly twice as likely to have a caesarean section. And have you noticed more obese mothers are coming forward? Yes. Does that concern you? Well, yes, it does. And, you know, I, 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 I bet that uh, it won't be very long before we say, right now, hysterectomies are probably the most common procedure we've done in the United States. I, I bet it won't be long before bariatric surgery is the most common procedure we do. Really? You guys in America have got a bit of a problem on your hands. With obesity putting a strain on mother and baby, as well as health services, it's a stark reminder why habits need to change on both sides of the Atlantic. Back in the UK, Dr Christian wants to apply the lessons from America before it's too late. 
He's bringing together 16 super size and super skinnies to face up to calorie crises at both ends of the scale. And he's ready to ask another two to step up to the plate and face a dietary kickstart in his feeding clinic. Victoria, come out and join me. So, Victoria, I'm going to pay you with Hannah. Come and say hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello. I'm Victoria, I'm 19. Hannah, I'm 23. Oh my gosh, you're so skinny. <laughs> yeah, I know. When I first saw Victoria, when she told me how old she was, that she was only 19, that shocked me quite a lot, actually. Like, how can you be that young or be that big? What about meals? Um, it's like large portions and, yeah, unhealthy okay. stuff. Oh, no. Really, really small portions. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm worried because I, I can get really emotional, and if someone says no to me, I, I don't like it. If she's got foods I don't like, I will tell her. <laughs> My stomach's going to, like, shrink and everything. Victoria eats enough for three women, and her diet is really high in fat, whereas Hannah hates greasy food. But I'm hoping that by bringing them together, they'll teach each other some much healthier habits. 19-year-old Victoria Madden may be studying to be a nurse, but at 19 stone 5, she's starting to worry more about her own condition. If I just stand up tall and look down, all I can see is my stomach. I should be able to look down and see my legs and toes, but I can't. And her diagnosis? She's a grade-A comfort eater. If I'm feeling a bit depressed, I'll, I'll just stuff my face all day. Things like sausage rolls, pork pies, cheese, crisps. And then there's things like takeaways. Two or three times a week, I'll say, oh, Dad, fancy a pizza or Chinese. A double-decker burger, which is like two burgers. Actually, I do have salad with that. It's not just what she's eating, but how much of it she's having on her plate. And Dad John's sizeable servings may not be helping. Two burgers. Um, I'll have one and three sausages. Three sausages. Please. It's very much, you know, I ask him for the food and he supplies me with it. When I was a child, you had to eat what was put in front of you and you tend to instill that into your children as well. Even I know I feel full and I'll just keep going until the plate's finished. And most nights she'll still have room for her favourite dessert, apple pie and ice cream. And as if that's not enough, Victoria is also nursing a secret stash. In my bedroom, I have a drawer, which Dad doesn't know about, actually. My favourite savoury food, crisps. I can get through four bags at a time. All in all, Victoria's clocking up nearly triple the number of calories she should be in a day. But increasingly self-conscious about her size, she stopped going out with friends. She is missing out on a lot of things, but she tends not, not to go to parties or anything like that because she, she can't find anything to wear. It's sad to see your child like that, yeah. The more isolated Victoria's become, the more she's turned to food as a comfort. I do seek pleasure in sort of eating food. It's a vicious, a really vicious circle. And, you know, every time I think about my weight, that upsets me even more. And then that triggers, you know, I'll go and eat. And it's just frustrating. How much do you try and get out of your patterns, though? You can't. In contrast, seven and a half stone student Hannah Pidgeley has quite a different dilemma with her diet. She's just too fussy about food. My friends and family also are very stubborn. <laughs> and when it comes to eating food I don't like, I won't. I really don't like greasy food. I don't like salad. I don't like red meat, don't like cheese, I hate cheese. In fact, she'd rather have a cup of tea. I can drink about 10 cups in a day. <laughs> a full-time student by day and nail technician by night, Hannah blames her busy schedule for her dreary daily diet. I don't really like eating too much food in the morning because it makes me feel sick, so I can just about manage two crumpets and a cup of tea. Sometimes I can't even eat that, and I'll throw it away. And lunch isn't up to much either. I'll just grab something quick and easy, like a piece of kiwi fruit. Dinner, I'll have something really small, just little things I can manage. And then I'll have another cup of tea. 
For long-term girlfriend Laura, living with such a picky partner isn't always easy. I eat completely different things than she does. She's fussy. She'll pick her food. She'll have the smallest portions. Like if we go out, sometimes she'll just ask for a child's portion. In fact, Hannah's surviving on fewer calories than a six-year-old girl needs, and her nutrient-deficient diet is starting to take its toll. Thank you. Hannah and I do want to have kids together, but her weight is causing problems. With irregular periods, her body is already showing signs of infertility, and having been diagnosed once with malnutrition, Hannah's putting her health and her future at risk. I know that my weight is possibly making me infertile, as doctors have said before. So I do need to sort myself out, hopefully sooner rather than later. But before Hannah takes on Victoria's rather contrasting diet in the feeding clinic, Dr Christian has some transatlantic shock treatment in store for Victoria. He's sending her to America for a look at just what her future might hold if she doesn't change her ways. I'm really nervous about what I'm going to go and see in America, but maybe, it, you know, it'll hit home um, the situation that I'm in. She's on her way to meet 34 stone 9 mum of two, Holly, whose body is now paying the price for a lifetime of overeating. I kept eating everything I wanted to eat. Big steaks and fried chicken. It'll be all right, I eat this whole box of cookies. I'll go do something tomorrow and work it off. Which never happened, which never happened, ever, ever. Like Victoria, Holly once dreamed of being a nurse, but her health has got so bad that now it's her who's in need of care, courtesy of her 14-year-old daughter. I help her out because I know it's hard for her to move around like, so I will help her in the bathroom when she goes to the restroom. My weight have caused damage to my kid's life and it's caused damage to my life, period. At just 19, Victoria may be headed down a similar road, and now she's about to meet her larger-than-life counterpart. Victoria? Hi. Hi. Nice How to you meet doing? you. Nice to meet you, too. Come on. Thank you. So, what do you do? Um, at the moment, I'm training to be a nurse. Um, really? At university. I wanted to be a nurse, too. I was looking forward to spending some time with you. You are very young, and you're heading the way I am. And it's not going to be good for you, and especially if you want to get out there and be a nurse. Yeah. Because being this way, you have to have people to help you with a lot of things. I've already noticed after work my knees hurt and my back hurts mm -hmm. and my feet are on fire and all I want to do is just, you know, go to sleep because I'm so tired. Yeah, that's the weight. That's mm -hmm. the weight. God, I was, I was a bit scared when I saw Holly. Like, I saw her with a walking stick and she had heavy breathing and, like, my heart went out to her. But then I've, I've got the early signs of everything that Holly has and it's, it's scary. Holly's keen to show Victoria some of the difficulties she might face in the future. Wiping myself. I have a tool over here for when I use the bathroom. It's embarrassing mm. because my daughter is 14. Yeah. She shouldn't have to see her mother like that. I don't want you to have to go through what I do. To... Oh, don't. <laughs> Me, but they have to wipe you or help you clean yourself. You don't want to do this. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's way too hard. I'm sorry. The thing is, I, t I totally understand what you're going through. This is what your life going to end up to be. With a BMI of 93, more than triple the healthy limit of 25, Holly's last hope is losing enough weight to qualify for weight loss surgery. And the next morning, she's showing Victoria just how she's intending to do that, aqua aerobics. Nearly 35 stone, this is seriously hard work for Holly. 
but working out underwater eases stress on the joints and it's her best bet to burn those calories. <laughs> when I hear the word exercise, I automatically kind of, no, I'm not doing that, you know, it's exercise. But um, no, I really did enjoy it. That was good. <laughs> And it's time to find out if all Holly's hard work is paying off. Victoria's joining her for a checkup with bariatric surgeon Dr. Kumaran. Do you have any pain here? No. Who needs to see evidence Holly's moving in the right direction for weight loss surgery? Oh, you're okay, hold on, hold on. She needs to prove she's brought her weight down from 495 pounds three months ago. 481, you're down, yay! <laughs> That's awesome! It's good news for Holly, but for Victoria, who weighed 19 stone 5 two months ago, the scales have a shock in store today. 282 pounds, which is 20 stone 2 pounds. Okay. Okay. You Weighing the heaviest she's ever been and having had a terrifying glimpse into what her future might hold, all proves too much. For now, for me to hit 20 stone, you know, it's it's something that I didn't want to end up doing, and I have. And... If she don't change it now, it's going to be too late. I know she can change it. She just got to believe in herself and knowing that she is worth it. We keep in contact? We sisters now? Yeah. We sisters? OK. We sisters. OK. Oh. I know that I've been eating more recently, and it's just, in a way, you think you're not going to gain the weight, but I'm just going to have to go back to England and really sort it out now. Back in the UK, and time to put good intentions to the test. Victoria is checking in for a two-day intensive stay in Dr. Christian's feeding clinic, ready to swap diets with fussy eater Hannah in the hope they'll both be shocked into a healthier lifestyle. At just seven stone seven, food avoider Hannah survives on cups of tea and little else, meaning she's under eating by around 500 calories a day. Looking through your food diary, it is really quite restrictive. The top five things consumed in greatest volume were all drinks. Not really? one bit of food managed to make it onto that list. Oh, dear. If you like your tea, drink tea, but you must eat alongside it. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that your controlling nature is not going to allow those changes to happen. Mm -hmm. What you can you tell me to reassure me? I like to be in control, that's right, but I don't like to do things wrong. Um, I know I'm doing it wrong now, so I want to rectify that. While Hannah needs to find time in her day to eat, student nurse Victoria is eating enough for three. Constant snacking and comfort eating now see 19-year-old Victoria hit the scales at over 20 stone. Analyzing your food diary does not make very pretty reading, I'll be honest with you. It's incredibly high in fat, 400%. No. Saturated fat. Yeah, four times that means the amount of saturated fat that you should yeah. be eating. How's your self-esteem? How do you feel about yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, I hate myself. It's quite recently as well, cos I do come across as looking pregnant and a lot of people have commented, so... And what do you do about that when they say that? Go and eat some more. <laughs> yeah. Which is not helping you, is it? No. I don't think we're going to get you on track with your weight unless you start caring about yourself as much as you will care about your patients in the future. Yeah. And it's time to test that resolve as Super Size and Super Skinny sit down to swap diets, starting with breakfast. For Victoria, this usually means three thick slices of jam toast, two croissants and a large bowl of cornflakes washed down with a glass of cola and a pint of orange juice. Really? <laughs> Whereas Hannah would nibble on just a couple of crumpets while having the first of many cups of sugary tea. I'm quite shocked. Like, I wouldn't be able to survive on two crumpets. I don't know how you can. Do you not feel hungry or anything? No. If I do, I'll have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems fussy eater Hannah isn't a fan of much on her plate either. 
I eat quite a lot of bread. I never eat bread, ever. I really don't like croissant. I don't even understand why people eat them. <laughs> They're gross. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna be able to eat that cereal. I'm gonna give it a go, I'm gonna try any. If I can get through this slice, I'll eat the cereal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I really don't like it, so you know. With Victoria having polished off her poultry portion... That's not really touch the sides. ..and Hannah managing just a fraction of hers, this could be a tough couple of days. I was expecting a lot and I got it. That would probably do me for, like, two days. <laughs> two crumpets. God, I could eat, like, a whole bag of crumpets. I'm really hungry now. I'm not holding up much hope for the rest of the day. Victoria's fears are realised a few hours later at lunch, when she's given more tea and just a solitary kiwi. I can't believe I'm just eating a kiwi. <laughs> and tea. But kiwi, <laughs> come on, really? Meanwhile, Hannah has to take on another glass of cola, soup, three chocolate bars, crisps and a sausage, egg and bacon sandwich. Bread again. Yeah, what's wrong with the sandwich at lunchtime? I hate sausage. I'm not a fan of egg either. Just giving me like the worst meal in a sandwich. Hmm. They're nice. <laughs> With your food, I've noticed you, you pick food apart and you know, you probably haven't eaten a full half a sandwich there. I've always been a picker. Always been a picker. Yeah. I want to pick right now, but now you're looking at me. I can't do it. So eat the sandwich. <laughs> Finish my kiwi. Two meals in, and with her defences up, Dr Christian feels Hannah's in need of a pep talk. Why do you think you are still slightly resisting? Because mm, I hate that feeling. I don't like being full, and I know it's going to make me feel sick. I wonder if what you call feeling really bloated is everyone else's feeling of just having had a normal-sized meal. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think anyone would feel bloated to the point of sickness after eating a sandwich and some crisps. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to evening meals and tomorrow, you've got to do so much harder. Oh. I'll try and clear my plate. Promise? Oh, uh, you can hold me to Shake it. Shake on that. <laughs> I do. Right, done. <laughs> While Hannah's left to stew, Dr Christian wants to take Victoria to task too. This comfort eater is currently consuming three times the calories she should be, and a major contributor to her high-fat, high-sugar diet is her regular dessert of choice. Apple pie with a sizeable dollop of dairy ice cream. You like an ice cream now and again, don't you? Yeah. Do you know how many calories worth of ice cream you eat a week? No. About 1,200 calories worth Just a week. Just ice cream? Just oh ice cream. To show Victoria exactly what goes into her favourite sweet treat, Dr Christian is making up her monthly supply. 45 egg yolks are going to go in to start with. 1.4 litres of double cream. What's not so good about double cream? It's high in fat. It's really high in fat. Saturated fat. There is also 2.3 litres of milk. And it goes. There is 757 grams of sugar in your month's supply of ice cream. Oh, Lord. With so much fat and sugar in her diet, Dr Christian's concerned Victoria could be heading for some disturbing health problems. Something you've seen nursing? Yeah. Do you know what they are? Foot ulcers. They're foot ulcers. From diabetes. Spot on. How do you know about that? I <laughs> had to do an assignment on it at university. Uh, and what did you find out? That type 2 diabetes is primarily from your diet. Very much weight-related. Yeah. Type 2 diabetes. Diabetes affects your feet in this way. It can make you go blind. It can affect your kidneys and cause your kidneys to fail. And it's probably the number one cause of amputations that we see in this country. Another reason on the list why I want you to sort this out. Definitely. Having suffered a day of puny portions, Victoria's presented with a rather dreary dinner of three veggie fingers, curly fries and a handful of sweet corn. Famous cup of tea again. For greasy foodophobe Hannah, it's a calorie-laden mixed grill with two pork chops, sausage, onion rings, mushrooms, peas and chips and a large helping of Victoria's favourite dessert, 
apple pie and ice cream. Mmm, it smells gross. Oh, you don't like it? I don't like the smell of it at all. For me, I still feel full. And then being presented with this, it's just like, mmm. Just three meals in and Victoria's huge portions have already taken their toll. You're upset, aren't you? <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know, I didn't realise that it was such a problem. <laughs> you don't have to eat all of it. I didn't think it would be this much of a struggle. I didn't think I was this bad. Hannah is finally recognising how much she needs to change, and she's not the only one. When I look at the portion that's on your plate, that is what I would usually eat, and I know full well that that's probably two dinners in one. <laughs> <laughs> Having at least made a dent in dinner, and even taken on the apple pie and ice cream, Hannah's made something of a breakthrough. I didn't expect to react like that. I didn't think I was anywhere near as bad as what I actually am. Uh, and I'm annoyed at myself more than anything. I'm annoyed that I've let myself get like this. The next morning, and it's time to see if a new day really is a new dawn. Victoria is presented with a small bacon roll to go with her now customary cup of tea. Thank you. While Hannah has a large helping of baked beans with two thick slices of buttered toast and a large glass of full-fat milk. So, um, how are you feeling from, like, last night? I'm not feeling so stressed now. Yeah? I think as well, yesterday, seeing the complete contrast in portion sizes. No, I didn't think my portions were that small. And it was the same for me, like, what I was seeing on your plate was... Yeah, it wasn't good. I didn't like it. What's the start? Yeah. I am starting to feel full, but I really want to finish it. Plus, I made a promise to Dr Christian that I'd finish at least one plate. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's sticking to that promise and ploughing through her plateful. Right down to the last mouthful. Mm. You're done. Mm. So good. <laughs> well done. Thanks. <laughs> I am really, really proud of Hannah this morning. She's like a changed woman. She came down here and she just she just dived straight in and I just thought, you know, that's such a drastic change from yesterday. So this is a picture of me. Dr Christian wants them both to think about why their eating habits have become so bad, with a look through some old photos, and for Victoria, it brings up some difficult emotions. This was actually on my 18th birthday. Oh, really nice that picture. But I didn't particularly want to go out and socialise with my friends. Um, oh. I just felt like I couldn't find any nice clothes to wear and... You let it get to you that much? I think it's also that fear of having people turn round and, you know, shout fatty and stuff. So I tend to keep myself to myself and that way I know no one can hurt me. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sad. I think it's just, you know, I have been bullied through school. And, um, you know, I'm not putting myself in those positions where people can turn around and shout abuse at me. It's, you know. But now you come here and you're going to be able to make a change? Yeah. Understanding the emotions behind over or under eating is a vital step towards a healthier future. But for those suffering with an eating disorder, the road to recovery is far more complex. And in recent years, experts have seen a significant rise in cases amongst older women. Journalist Emma Wolfe is a recovered anorexic. When she was ill, she began to see the prematurely ageing effects anorexia can have on the body, with the early signs of osteoporosis. I was getting bad results on my bone scans. I had the bones of a woman a lot older than, than my age. Fortunately, since returning to a healthy weight, Emma's bone density has returned to normal too. Amazingly, up to 90% of women with anorexia show some degree of bone loss, and when you're older, the impact can be devastating. Emma's on her way to meet Margaret, 
She developed anorexia 11 years ago, at the age of 54. Mostly anorexia is a teenage or a young woman's condition, and I'm just really, really curious to find out what triggered it in her 50s, how people reacted to her, how she's managing to deal with it, also about the health implications of being in your 50s with anorexia. My lowest weight was about four and a half stone. Starving my body for so many years, I developed osteoporosis, and that has led to the curvature of the spine, which I've lost four inches in height. That's had such a devastating effect on me, mentally and physically. I went from a nice-looking, healthy person to really a, like a very withered old lady. Margaret has now begun the long journey of recovery. Margaret. Hello. Hi, I'm Emma. Pleased to meet you. But a look at her former wardrobe illustrates the impact anorexia has had. This was one of my favourite dresses. Wow. But as you can see, the length. So were you much taller? Four inches is such a lot. Oh, that kind yeah. of really yeah. shows me yeah. how tall you used to be. Yes, yeah. yeah. Even, even leggings, look. Mm. <laughs> this would be tight. Mm. But my legs are so thin, mm. so very thin. It's a huge change from the healthy woman she used to be. I mean, your face, you have flesh on your face. I know. I was 47 there. Oh, so what sort of age did the eating disorder start? Well, it was in my early 50s. I think my figure had been the best it had ever been. Friends were telling me I had a lovely figure for my age, and I really, really wanted to keep that. So it started as a diet? Well, it was just to lose a few pounds, actually. Yeah. But gradually, the fat was going yeah. and the carbohydrate. And you trim here and you trim there and you keep it, trimming. I was getting then that I just couldn't eat them. Mm. And my weight was going down mm. and down it and It starts down. to affect your mind. I wasn't thinking straight at all. Mm. One thing that was very upsetting is my grandchildren, when they were born, I was too weak even to lift them out of a cot. Mm. At one stage, things got so bad, Margaret had to be put on a nasal gastric feed to keep her alive. But it took years before she felt able to confront her illness and seek help. I'd never heard of anybody in their 50s, or 40s even, having an eating disorder. It was something that happened to teenagers. Teenage girls. <laughs> now what kind of help are you getting? Um, I'm having some counselling. Yeah. And this physiotherapist I see, he is so good and he's doing all these exercises mm. to build me up and giving me so much encouragement. The whole team are. Every day is still a struggle, but having gained nine pounds from her lowest weight, Margaret proves that hope exists, whatever your age. To find out more about the rise in late onset anorexia, Emma's meeting consultant psychiatrist, Dr. Sylvia de Habra. Is there awareness amongst GPs and other health professionals about picking up eating disorders in older women? If you are older, then you're less likely to be thought of to have an eating disorder. Yeah. But the other thing is that older people are less likely to complain that they're not coping or that they're having an eating disorder because of the stigma. What about the health impact? Taking into account the effect, for example, of age on bone density, that naturally decreases with age. Then if you add starvation and weight loss to that, it can be catastrophic. It's clear that eating disorders amongst older people are on the rise. I think the important thing, though, is that people know there is help available and that they know where to go in order to get it. It's time for Hannah and Victoria's final meal in the feeding clinic. And Victoria's going out with a bang. It's going to be a beast of meal, isn't it? <laughs> All I'm going to say is good luck to you. She's serving up her all-too-regular Chinese takeaway treat, which, for greasy food-hating Hannah, is a bit of a shock. Hannah, really? <laughs> yes, really. It's a Chinese, obviously. We've got spring rolls, um, spare ribs, chips, egg fried rice and chicken and cashew nuts. Wow, that smells a bit horrible. And that's not to mention the apple pie and full-fat dairy ice cream on the side. 
while Victoria has another of Hannah's bland offerings, a measly bowl of pasta and tomato sauce with half a pint of cranberry juice. I can tell you now I will not be able to eat all this. <laughs> I wouldn't I'm ask you to eat all of that. I just can't believe it. it is a lot of food. It is a lot of food. It's yeah. scaring me just looking at this. I'm pretty embarrassed and horrified by it. I'll give it a go, because I do like chicken, so... Cool. Hannah at least has a try, though she's barely made a dent in it, by the time Victoria's polished hers off. I can certainly see how small my portions are now. It seems this portion-distorting duo have both now seen the error of their ways. So I know when I go home that I won't be eating Chinese anytime soon. And I promise never to eat just one kiwi on its own ever again, <laughs> OK? OK. <laughs> With their final dinner done, Dr Christian wants to hand over their blueprints for a healthier future. So, Victoria, that one's yours. Now, you. top tip for you, I would say, really, is get on top of your emotions. Don't let your emotions drive your feeding habits, all right? And if you can conquer your emotions, then the world is your oyster. All right, and Hannah, this one's yours. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is you need to relax a little bit. <laughs> Relinquish control mm -hmm. in order to gain control. Does that make sense to you? Definitely. Good. Best of luck to the both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Before I came in, I was quite resistant. I didn't actually think my eating habits were that bad, but it turns out they are pretty poor. Me and Dr Christian had words. He wasn't impressed with me, and he was right. <laughs> I was wrong, and I will mend my ways. Definitely. Since I've been in the feeding clinic, I've realised that I do eat an awful lot throughout the day. I just have to totally get rid of my secret drawer because I really want to change my lifestyle and I'm going to make Dr Christian proud of me. Take care and you. See you later. Dr Christian will be checking up on their progress in two months' time. Back over the Atlantic and Macallan, America's fattest city, Dr Christian's investigating the causes of the country's obesity crisis as a lesson for us back in the UK. And a huge part of the problem is fast food. Here in McAllen, there is temptation on every corner and fast food joints as far as the eye can see. But this place isn't alone, as across the country, a quarter of Americans visit a fast food restaurant every single day. They're cheap, they're convenient, and in many cases, you don't even have to get out of your car. <laughs> Fast food joints tempt customers with special offers, from meal deals and dollar burgers to one restaurant which will let you have its monster burger for free if you can eat it in 30 minutes. Whoa. There you are, sir. This is absolutely insane. I would say this is probably about three times what the average man needs to eat per day, and you're getting that just in this one meal. Hmm. Dr Christian is up for the challenge. But he also knows when enough is enough. OK, so admittedly, this burger is a marketing gimmick. People don't eat this sort of thing every day. But it does show you a very real point, and that is, if portion sizes are big, you tend to overeat. If you're given a very large plate of food, you do do your best to finish it, usually because that's the way that we've been brought up. And here in America, it really does explain why they have such a problem with obesity. But up the interstate in Dallas, at Start Restaurant, they're trying to tackle the obesity problem at ground level. All these people may be queuing up for yet more fast food, but this is a drive through with a difference. You won't find any greasy French fries or supersized sodas here. The menu includes salads, baked vegetable chips, and only the freshest of ingredients. What about... A bad, a better burger. Is that a good choice? Yeah, it's pretty good. Quinoa salad as well, and a smoothie. This is a million miles away from any other burger that I've had before. The meat actually tastes of meat. It's not dripping in grease and fat, and it's not really salty either. I could really get used to this. The brains behind this healthy drive-through restaurant is Erin McCool. 
and I'm interested to know, do you think you're attracting people away from the conventional, less healthy fast food chains, or do you think the sort of people who come here are the sort of people who would be eating healthily anyway? There are definitely a few converts that I see here regularly now. I'm really pleased to hear that, because you are making people healthier because of it. It's a good thing. So, thank you. Cheers. It's great to see a place like this taking a stand and trying to change things, but, but the burger and fries way of eating is so ingrained in culture here that actually it's the eating habits of a nation that are going to have to be changed, and that isn't going to happen overnight. It's been just over two months since comfort eater Victoria and fussy food avoider Hannah left the feeding clinic, but have they kept their resolve and stuck to those diet plans? I feel like it's better. Lots more energy, happier. I don't want to let anyone down, especially myself, so I'm just hoping I've done enough. I am feeling a lot more confident in myself. You know, I've been noticing I can wear things now that I didn't perhaps get into before. I think people are noticing that I'm just walking around with a smile on my face now, so I think they're seeing a difference. Anna, hi. You're looking very well. I Gosh. <laughs> How have things been? Yeah, they've been really good. I can eat a whole plate of food now. Right, good. And I eat beef now, even though I don't like it. I actually eat it. You do? Mm-hmm, yeah. In what form? Like a steak or something? Uh, like steak, bolognese, yeah. Oh, that's really good. But I know also fertility was an issue, wasn't it? And you hadn't been having periods or your periods were scanty. Yeah, weren't they? Existent. What's changed on that front? I have periods now, yeah. Really? <laughs> I do, yeah. So they've started again. Mm -hmm. So that means you must have put on some weight. I feel it? a lot better for it, a lot better. Oh, good news, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you again, you're looking very well. Thank you. So tell me how it's been going. Have you made some changes? Yeah, I have. No snacking in the bedroom at all. The um, snack drawer, is it still oh, there? God, that's gone now. The snack drawer has yeah. gone. I haven't had a takeaway at all. Have you seen a change to your body shape yet? I think so. I think I've lost a little bit of chin, yeah, so I'm pretty so. happy with that. So you like that too? Yeah. When you were in the feeding clinic and we were talking, you said something to me that you really didn't like yourself very much. In fact, you said you hated yourself. Yeah. Which is a very distressing thing for me yeah. to hear. Do you still feel that way? No, I've changed my outlook now. I'm smiling a lot more. And if I do come across situations where my stress levels get a bit high and I just speak to people, you know, there's loads of people out there to speak to and... I they will be far more constructive than food ever will be. Yeah. That's good that you've realised that. It's time for Victoria and Hannah to be reunited. Wow. Hello. You look amazing. Oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> Honestly, you really? look like a new woman. Yeah, I, I do feel a lot better now compared yeah, to what I got, You've got the legs on show. <laughs> <laughs> and you? You look really smiling. Yeah. Really vibrant. Dad. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. You're good to see each other again? Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. She looks incredible. I've liked seeing you both again, I have to say. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about you. Doesn't she look stunning in that dress? But doesn't she? Yeah. Exactly. So whatever it was that we did to her, it worked, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> so weight-wise, how do we think you've done? I hope I've done good. <laughs> you have done good. You've put on five whole pounds. Yay. <laughs> are you pleased with that? Yeah. And you know what? That five pounds shows you are curvier <laughs> and you know from the point of view of your periods and the way that you feel now, it is already making a difference. It's worth it. And Victoria, you, again, look at you. And the number one important thing to me is now you like yourself yes. more. <laughs> and that is really key. I'm going to put you straight out of your misery. Right. One stone, six pounds. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I'm really, really proud of both of you. I think you've done really, really well. So thank you for not letting me down. Especially you, madam. <laughs> All right, well done. Thank, thank you. you. I'm so happy. It's not just the weight. You know, a young girl should be going out and having fun, and I'm doing that now. Hopefully, a year down the line, I'll get to where I want to get to. All the hard work has definitely been worth it. Hopefully, the future holds children eventually, which is my main aim. Yeah, really happy. <laughs> <laughs>